Hey y'all, welcome back to the crazy. We're filming the crazy from a different place today. This is my craft room slash Steve's office now. Um, but the yard guy's here and it's too loud in my dining room. So here we are. Um, behind that stack of project bags is my sewing table, my sewing machine. Over yonder is my little temporary desk and my computer and all my little desk crap. Musical instruments we seldom play up on the wall. Closet full of craft stuff I can't get to because the temporary desk is there. But hey, it is what it is. Just got to do what we do, right? Y'all are sitting on my ironing board. And my husband is sitting right over here at what used to be my desk. And I guess I'm willing to give it up to have him still be working from home. So, welcome to the crazy craft room. This is take two because the yard guy is here and ringing the doorbell. Um, so let's see if I can remember what I said the first time, not repeat myself too much. Who knows? We'll give it a go. Um, it's been a month since my last floss tube. Apparently I just cannot remember to get all of my poop scraped together in one neat little pile and get on here to talk about it. But um, I figured I needed to catch up before it got too far behind this time. So who knows when I'll be back. I'm still aiming for two weeks. Who knows? I apologize. I'm so sorry. Um, Velvy is due any day. I have been setting the alarm and getting up at least every two hours during the night to check on her. And I am a little tired and brain dead. Steve's doing good. He had his surgery on, I don't remember if it was May 27th or 28th, down in Little Rock at UAMS, but he is doing well. Um, the huge mass on his back turned out to be an abscess, which we are grateful for. Um, that's still healing kind of by secondary intention, kind of from the inside out. And he's still got some drainage, but he's feeling probably 80%. He's getting better. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you all so much for all your prayers and good thoughts for him. Um, what else? The kitties are mostly doing well. I've got one little one that's had a little bit of a GI upset, but he's been to the vet and on some meds, so he's getting better. Um, Praline's kittens are will be three weeks old on Thursday. They're cutest little bugs, and they're doing great. And um, Velvy might have been due as early as last Wednesday, maybe as late as this coming Saturday. I figure she's likely to have the babies this afternoon when I have an eye doctor appointment because that's just how life goes. But if they get here safely, I don't care. It's worth it. Um, but sooner rather than later because I'm tired of setting the alarm every two hours because <laughs> it makes me stupid when I get this sleep deprived. My son's doing great. Um, he and my grandson are in Tampa. He is, has just bought a house there. He closes on the 7th, I think. And he'll be moving the end of the month. So he's real excited and I'm very excited for him. He's working at the Department of Veteran Affairs there. Um, and he gets to work from home every other week. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, you know, it is what it is. Other than that, I've been sewing a lot. So I haven't been stitching as much. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about project bags here in a little while. Um, speaking of project bags, stay tuned to the end because I have a project bag full of goodies to give away for, um, I hit 3,500 subscribers a couple weeks ago, maybe a month, who knows, um, but I do have goodies to give away. Okay. I don't remember if that's all or not, but hey, we're going with it. Um, I don't have any new FFOs. I did get Oh Beautiful, which I've had framed probably for six months. I did get it hung on the wall a couple weeks ago, so it's now hanging, hanging in my dining room, and I love it. And, oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. I did have um, a couple of finishes. This is Sail Away from Shepherd's Bush. It's a beautiful pattern. I saw this when she's Australian and her name has gone right out of Lisa's stitching and such, I believe. Um, she had shown a finish of this and I fell in love and decided that I needed it. So I got that and I don't remember exactly when I started, but it was sometime late last summer, early last fall um, when I started it. And 
got it finished a few weeks ago. Like many shepherd's bush patterns, it has a central area that is cross stitch. Um, a number of bands of either specialty stitch or cross stitch. A fair amount of one over one words. Just love those. And I think it turned out beautifully. So I am looking forward to getting this framed and up on the wall also. I think it, I think it's really pretty. And it says, sail away my dear one upon a lapis sea, but if the winds be restless, come back again to me, which I thought was a really pretty sentiment. I have to tell you, I changed it a little bit because there was a motif in the center of both of these um, motifs. And I did change them to put my initials and the year. And I was not thrilled about stitching 2020 on any damn thing. But I did. So, there's Sail Away. I have the feeling this version is going to go faster. <laughs> because I've already said it once. Okay. My next, we'll call this one a semi-finish. Um, this is Stitch or Die from Heartstring Sampley, and I apologize, I've got big windows right in front of my office and lots of glare. There we go. Stitch or Die from Heartstring Sampley, and I won this last year from Erin at Two Martini Stitcher as her 1,000 subscriber giveaway. And she had kitted it up and sent it along to me, and then we started it sometime around May 5th, I believe, but I don't remember the day for sure, as a mania start. And she has completely finished hers. And I have finished mine to the extent that I am going to right now. Um, the wording on it says, stitch or die. And with everything that was going on with Steve and kind of with the total craziness in the world right now, that just didn't speak to me because I love cross stitching, but I am not willing to die for it. And there's been so much sadness and so much death and again it just didn't speak to me so i'm not sure what i'm going to stitch up there in that blank spot but when it comes to me i will chart out some wording and and stitch it there i did make a couple of changes the little kitty who was charted as a tabby cat became a berman for me um i did the spools satin stitched across the spools for the thread and seems like i changed the color of something else but i don't remember now what it was but I thought it was very cute it was a very quick little stitch and thanks to Erin for sharing that with me I really enjoyed it it's a 32 count um, linen I don't remember what because I have no brain power and it's stitched with the call for threads other than where I subbed out here for the Berman and I think I may put stitching and cats in there not sure but that would describe me, wouldn't it? So we'll see. Here's all the flosses that Erin sent. And very happy with that. I may try to get that finished this coming weekend just so I can get it out of my whip pile. Sorry, I have stacks upon stacks. Because I'm used to recording at my dining room table, which is a lot bigger than the ironing board here. <laughs> And then my next finish was Berry Cottage from Plum Street Samplers. There we go. Let's blare. Um, I was not familiar with this as a Plum Street pattern, and I found it just when I was digging around through the Plum Street um, area at Ann's shop, the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock. And it spoke to me because it has strawberries. And I know these are intended to be hillocks or um, haystacks, but to me, they look like watermelon rinds. So it made me think, oh, my two favorite fruits, strawberries and watermelon. So I needed to stitch it. And I did. And I had, oh, maybe I pulled 50% of the called fours. And then I just subbed in with what I had, mostly Victorian motto. This is also stitched on a 36 count that totally escapes me what it is right now. If anybody desperately needs to know, I can look back in my Instagram feed. I'm sure I probably mentioned it there at some point when I was posting it. But I got this finished, I think, two weeks ago. And there is Berry Cottage. I did not make any changes to this other than where I substituted in for threads I might not have had. 
the little house here and the flower are one over one. And I don't mind doing one over one other than it drives me crazy how long it takes to get anywhere because you know you're doing such tiny stitches that it takes four times as long to fill in the area of what you would usually get filled in with one stitch. But I do love the way it looks and I think it came out very cute. And of course it has sheep on it and I love me some sheep. I don't know if I will frame this or do it as a flat fold. All dependent on when I get my took us in gear and um, I have to move the little temporary table with my computer on it because all of my frames and finishing and crafting supplies are in the closet. So finishing is temporarily on hold. If it ends up that Steve is going to end up continuing to work from home for a while, then I will probably um, will rearrange this room a little more. But it's working for now, so it is what it is. And there's my finishes. And let me take a sip. Sorry. Okay, moving on. I have to look at my list because I'm brain dead. Whips. <coughs> Excuse me. The last time I did a floss tube, which was, I think, like May 31st or something maybe, I was working on <clears throat> Good Deeds from Brenda Gervais, which I kitted up for Mania 2018 and then never started. So I did pull it out and it was a Mania start this year, and uh, but I had kitted up with 28 count, so I did change it to a 36 count because that's my new jam. Well, not my new jam, but it's been my jam pretty soon after Mania last, or a couple years ago. Again, I have no clue what the fabric is. I don't remember if it's a, it's a Zweigart linen of some form. And I, I was an idiot because look how much linen I'm gonna waste y'all. This is only gonna come out to about here. And if I had started it going this way, I could have done two pieces on it. But you know, that would have required more brain power than what I apparently have right now. So, oh well. But here's where I am. I'm mostly done with the little lady. I just need to finish filling in her skirt. And then there are two more tulips just like these here. And then there is another border and the wording around it. But I think she's super duper cute. I love that basket that she's holding. I don't always love cross stitch faces, but I like her. I think she's really cute. I think she's really cute. I'm hoping that that might be my screen capture, but YouTube tends to catch me doing some kind of goofy face instead. We'll see. But I will get back to her and hopefully she'll be a finish sooner rather than later. And I'm sorry, I'm taking the time to put everything away because I'm too tired to clean up a mess. And here's where I got interrupted last time. So let's see if I can get any further along the pathway this time. This is Time for God from Lizzie Kate. This is another one I, I actually started this for Mania 2018, but I started it on a 28 count linen, a 28 count Weeks Dye Works linen, and I hated it. Um, it was kind of an orangey gold color, which is not my particularly preferred um, color palette and the linen was super loosely woven so I did chunk that and I have restarted time for God and I am I, there are five little blocks or four little blocks um, and I've got two of them done so this is also a 36 count something or other and I'm stitching one over two with most of the call for flosses I have changed a couple of them just to suit me a little better. But I love this. Um, I've spent a lot of time on the top of the parking garage at UAMS stitching on that because of course, you know, you can't go in with your sick person at the hospital. You just have to wait. So Steve's had a couple of outpatient days there and I'm gonna be on a first name basis with all the parking garage people. I've also worked um, a little bit more on the little mystery sampler 
from Lizzie Kate. I think. I think I've worked on this since I saw y'all last. And I am a, not quite halfway done with this. I'm pretty sure that this fabric is 36 count. Picture this plus Sprite, which is kind of a, a pinky lavendery color which was not originally what I had gotten for this, but I like the fabric a lot. I wish that I had tweaked my color choices um, in my flosses just a little bit, but it's okay. It's all right. And like I said, I'm about not quite halfway. Um, this center block, when it's done, will, you know, if I get this line done, I'd be about halfway. So, and this one does stitch up fast when I get to going on it. And I'm doing that one, like I said, picture this plus Sprite 36 count with, I believe, most of the call for on it. So, I've apparently substituted quite a bit of DMC on the call for there. On that one, the, the blocks of color are so small that I just don't think that buying a whole lot of specialty floss on it that you get much bang for your buck. So if I didn't have them, I just substitute DMCs and I'm not sweating it. I started this one sometime last fall. I made the mistake of watching um, Julie at Reflections. And you can find her as Reflections Framing last year. And she had stitched and was showing off the um, checkerboard stag sampler from Samplers Remembered. And I just fell in love with it. I thought it was beautiful. And you know, I do love me a specialty stitch and this has a fair number of them. It's just, it's pretty. So I had gotten, I'd gotten, when I first worked on this last fall, I'd gotten most of that center basket of flowers done. And when I pulled it out this time, I've gotten this little box, which will end up being filled in. And then I think I've gotten this. The stag is completely cross-stitched. He needs to be back-stitched. And I have started some of the back-stitch, but I am not done with it on him. And I, because there is a fair amount, I'm going to try to um, back-stitch him as I go along. But really liking how that's looking. This is 36 count. See if I wrote it down. Apparently not. It's a 36 count from Picture This Plus. I can tell that by the way it feels. I think it may be Heartland. I am not positive about that. But I am stitching this with zero of the call for flosses I just pulled from my silk stash for this one. And they're really pretty colors in it. Very happy with that. This is in a bag that Cheryl McKinney um, made for me. I sent her, I had a whole bunch of beads that I wasn't using. And she uses beads on her little zipper finders. So I sent her some beads. And she sent me back the, two of these beautiful bags with the vinyl fronts that I, I, I can't. No, the vinyl is not my friend. It makes me crazy. So I make lots of project bags, but I don't make the vinyl ones because they make me want to shoot somebody. And then what else did I stitch on? This was another Mania start. This is Tis a Gift from Shepherd's Bush, which I don't remember if it was a market release last year or the year before. But it's everything I love about Shepherd's Bush. And I have gotten some real good progress on this one over the last few weeks. I am pretty much done with this center area, so I just need to fill in the vines around here. And then there is another um, row of specialty stitches across the bottom that is satin stitch, I believe. And satin stitch, I usually leave till the end because I think it's easy to pull it, um, snag those threads. So I will do that the very last thing that I do. This is 
this row or this band here is a specially stitched, I think it's called a darning weave. It wasn't hard. I did that in one evening. Just, you have to count a lot. <laughs> well, it is counted cross stitch, so. Mm. Would make sense, wouldn't it? And this one is, I have no idea. Apparently, I don't even know what I did with the thread for it. There it is. Uh, this came as a kit, so it's the kitted flosses, um, which are about, there's a couple of silks in here, and then the rest, I believe, are mostly weeks, but it came as kitted. So the linen, it's not a 36, it's a 32, because that's what they kit with, and it's, it's probably cream brulee, that's what it looks like to me, but I would have to read the kit to know that for sure. And I left stuff out of the checkerboard stack, so let me put him up. I don't go looking for that pattern at some point. Probably a good idea to have the pattern in the bag. Um, this is another one. I started this. It's been a while. I don't remember exactly. Joe with Pretty Southern was kind enough to lend me her copy of um, Souvenirs of Summer from Blackbird Designs, which is out of print. And I don't remember if that was one of the ones they reprinted recently or not. But she had loaned me her copy of that. And then last, last summer, last fall, um, Frankie Easter gifted me with my own copy of that booklet. And Thank you again so much, Frankie. I want to stitch everything in that book at, booklet. I love it. And so I, I have gotten back to, this is the Summer Jubilee pattern from that booklet. This is a 36 count <laughs> upside down. Yep, goes this way. Um, 36 count, picture this plus haunted. See, I actually do know some of them. And here's what I've got done. All I had done previously was maybe 30% of the flag. I think I had the blue and one white stripe and maybe part of another white stripe. So I have added most of that and I am probably approaching 50% done. The center of the pattern is right here at the center of this um, urn that I outlined last night and hopefully I will get to fill in tonight. But I'm super happy with how this is going. I've miscounted somewhere over here and had to change the border here to make it smaller zigzags because it was going to run into the, the flower. But ain't not, nobody got any time for frogging all that out, so it's just going to be a little bit different border there. And so then as I do the rest of the border, I will add in, you know, some more little areas with the smaller zigzags to kind of make it cohesive because I ain't frogging it out. But thank you again, Joe and... Um, Frankie, yeah, I sure, sure appreciate both y'all for enabling me on that. And on this, again, I think I had about, I pulled from my stash, and I think I had about 50% of the call for it, and then I've just substituted um, where I needed something from my stash, because I've got tons of Victorian motto and um, color and cotton that need to get used. We're approaching the bottom of the stack, y'all. We're not all the way there, but we are making progress. And then my last whip. This is Elizabeth Weston from Hands Across the Sea. It's the biggest thing I have ever made any attempt to stitch. I think she is so beautiful. And I pulled her out again yesterday. I had not worked on this for several months. And I pulled her out again yesterday. And last night I got these two, they're very hard to see on this fabric. This is 36 count, picture this plus ramble. And I am using the called for, um, I don't remember if they're Soie d'Alger or Averisoir or whatever, but it's the call for silks. 
but I got these two little baskets done here and these two berry looking things there. And I've got, I am a little more than halfway across the top and maybe a, a little over a third because this would be a third of the way down the, this um, one side. So page one is done and I have moved on a little bit to page two, I think. Well, I mean, I've done more than that across the top, obviously, but you get it. So, and I love it. She's going to take me forever. I'm going to have to live to be 100 to finish her, but I think she's beautiful. And I'm doing this exactly as called for other than where I have mistakes. And I'm sure, I haven't found any yet. I'm sure there will be some. If it's in a piece that size, frankly, I'm sure there will be many. Okay, and then I, have, I started, I think I ended up with somewhere around the neighborhood of seven or eight mania starts. I don't remember now. Um, and I was going to try not to start things this month because I don't care about the number of whips that I have other than my basket that I keep them in. They're falling out of constantly. So, um, I need to get a little control just so I don't have half them sliding off on the floor. So, I did start one thing during June. Um, Cal Stitcher and a Stitch for Mom are hosting the Blessed Bee Sal. This is um, a pattern from Brenda Gervais. And I had this in my stash. So I think it's very pretty. So on June 15th, I did start um, with them on the Blessed Bee Sal. And I stitched on it, I think, I think for two days, maybe three. And you can see I've got my house started and one flower mostly done here. This is, again, some type of picture of this plus linen that I don't remember. Again, maybe Heartland, maybe Sand, something or other. Um, and I'm doing, oh, these are mostly not the called fours. I mostly just pulled from my stash. But I think that's going to be cute. That one goes pretty fast. I just need to get it out and work on it. There are so many things I want to work on. It's my problem is too much too many to work on and there you have it that's what I've done for the last month well it's not all I've done but it's all I've cross stitch um, let me see what else is on my list to talk about here haul I've been pretty good about haul quite frankly because June was buy a new vacuum cleaner month so there wasn't a whole lot of haul money I have a um, central vacuum cleaner system but my house was built in 1996 or 1997 so it's 23 24 years old and the central vac system itself um, works well the tools that came with it originally not so much so I had to replace the um, the floor handle part the beater part of that and then, because I try not to cross-contaminate into my kitten room any more than I have to, I don't drag that into the kitten room. And my regular upright vacuum cleaner laid down and died. So I had to buy a new vacuum for that, too. If it rains, it pours. So I don't have much haul, but that's okay, because I've got enough crap anyway. <laughs> but I will show you what I got. I don't... Let me rephrase that. I see so many people doing wool applique, and I love the way it looks. And I tried it years ago, and I absolutely abhor cutting out all those little pieces. It just cutting out drives me nuts. But I keep looking at everybody's pieces that they're doing like this. I'm so sorry. And they're so cute, I want to do it. So I found on Etsy this little kit, and it's a cat. Isn't he cute? And it's free cut. So I'm going to give it another try. Because I like hand sewing. That part's fine. It's the cutting out all the little pieces parts that made me want to shoot myself. Um, so I'm going to give this a try. 
hopefully this weekend. I'm waiting on my Amazon order of some of the, it's not Wonder Under, but it's that adhesive bonding stuff. So that should show up Friday. So probably this weekend, I'm gonna give that a try again. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Haven't done that in a long time. Um, this was very reasonably priced on Etsy. I will try to remember to link her shop below. And if y'all know of any good sources for pre-cut wool applique stuff, I would love to hear about them because I did not have an easy time finding that. So we'll see. Like I need something else to, to do, right? I'd really rather have a nap than go to the eye doctor. Can you tell? And then my only other haul, and I don't remember where I got this, y'all. I don't remember if I went by the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock. I may have ordered this from Teresa. I just don't remember. But I have a little kit. This is a little Chessie and Me kit called Summer Liberty. And I think I've seen somebody doing this recently on um, Instagram. I don't remember who. But I think that's super cute. That may be my 4th of July start. And then this is called... Lulu's flock from Chessie and me and sheet lots of sheet and I think the um, the willow tree here is really cool so I will be getting that started at some point and then I had some stitchy kindness um, crystal geek who comments a lot on stuff. She's not on FlossTube, but she is on Instagram. I think she's the Needle Gnome on Instagram. Sent me a copy of one of Misty Purcell's A Robin's Discovery, which I think is adorable. I have bought several other of Misty's patterns, although I have not started them yet, but isn't that cute? I think that's adorable. Misty has a wonderful sense of color, and I think that's very, very pretty. So I'm looking forward to get doing that. And thank you very much, Crystal. Crystal has donated a whole lot of patterns that I have used in giveaways. And thank you again for that, Crystal. And hello to you and Caleb. And I hope your new kitty babies are doing well. They, they adopted a couple of stray kittens um, recently. And Caleb, who is her 14-year-old son, and Caleb is autistic, um, but he loves cats. So he's very happy with his new babies. And I'm happy for him, for him to have them. And I think that that's about it, other than we need to talk about giveaways. Whoopsie, my little wool kitty fell out of the kit. I need to put him back. Um, I have giveaways from last time to talk about. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about project bags and then I have giveaways for this week to talk about. So y'all stay tuned to get in on the goodies. Add to my stack of crap. My poor sewing machine is buried back there. Okay, giveaways from Floss Dude number 102. First of which, um, this was donated by Ann at the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, which is a wonderful shop. And I know um, several of you have commented um, to me on Instagram or um, Facebook or wherever that you have done some orders with Anne and how pleased you were with her selection and service. And I just want to reinforce that. She is a wonderful person. They are so easy to work with. Her and Sherry, they're the shop. So if you need to place an order with somebody, I'll put all of their inf information below and they are just terrific. But Anne, this was released at market this year and Anne donated a copy for me to give away for you guys. And the winner for this one is not written down. Poop. I know I emailed or commented on your comment on, um, on YouTube. So I will look back at my response and see who I drew to this because I that was several hours ago and I don't remember now but congratulations look for that comment email me at Leslie D Hurley at gmail.com and when I get your address I will send this out to you and then the next one I asked y'all 
this is a, a pattern that was um, donated by Livia at Rovaris and um, I believe it's called Sweet Land of Liberty and I asked y'all to comment Liberty and using the random comment picker for this one the winner is Sean Matthews so Sean same thing email me Leslie L-E-S-L-I-E D Hurley H-U-R-L-E-Y at gmail.com with your mailing address and I'll send that out to you This is an original copy of Cinnamon Stars from um, Plum Street Samplers. It is not in the plastic bag, but other than that, it is pristine. This was donated by Melody Bagwell, and this is such a pretty pattern. I have purchased this pattern, and I need to get it started, and I just haven't yet. But we're going give, to give this one away so somebody else can get it started. And the winner for this one is Barb Ginther. Barb, I hope, number one, I'm saying your name right, and number two... Please get in touch with me and send me your address so I can send this along to you. I did comment on your comment on YouTube. And then the last giveaway from last time, uh, the folks at mybobbin.com were kind enough to send me several things for me to give away to y'all. And I asked y'all, this looks like a farm scene to me. It's very pretty. It's a complete kit. It has the Ada, the floss and the pattern in directions, and of course the directions are in Russian, but I think you can look at the pattern and figure it out. Um, and the winner for this one is, another one I forgot to write down the name for. I did comment on your comment. Please be in touch, um, and I will get that sent out to you. And I apologize that I forgot to write those down. Oops. Okay, remove that stack to this stack. Now still hold on because we're going to talk about um, giveaway for this time. I'm going to show you very briefly some project bags that I have available. Guess what? The lawn guy's out front now. So I have a couple of these. I'm calling them pink and navy patchwork. They have a contrasting pink lining. So as of right now, I have two of these available. I have one of the pink house bag that has come back to me again. Um, a young lady ordered one of these for me and it did not arrive, it did not arrive. And so she let me know when I sent her a second one. And then this, this showed up in today's mail as having the first one having been undeliverable. Who knows, because I sent them both to the same address. But anyway, I now have a pink houses bag available. And I apologize for the creases. It just came back to me in the envelope that way. And I didn't iron. I have one of these fall print bags available. One pretty floral. One remaining pretty pussycats bag. This one is very cute. This one has a contrasting coordinating yellow lining. I still have a couple of the... Um, Chicks and Checks bags available. Chickens and a coordinating gingham. Super cute. A couple of the patriotic, patriotic puppy dog bags available. And y'all see my little label that I got? Isn't it cute? Same little Berman I have on my cat business cards. Two of those. I have one farmer's market slash local produce bag available, and one still remaining of the Alexander Henry Swingers fabric. So, project bags are $35. You can email me or you can find me on Instagram as at fat, P-H-A-T, C-A-T, flossing, P-H-L-O-S-S-I-N-G, at um, gmail, or no, it's just fat, at fat cat flossing um, on Instagram. Or, of course, you can email me at lesliedhurley at gmail.com. Okay. And the bags are $35, which includes U.S. shipping. I will ship elsewhere um, if you're outside the U.S. And on those, um, I will get a quote from you for you from the post office and let you know how much um, shipping would be. So then we are down to the very last thing to talk about, which is giveaways for this week. 
This is another pattern that Melody Bagwell donated. I believe this is an out of print from Bright Needle called Esmeralda's House. And she did include some of the DMC. The pattern is in gently used condition. She did not use a working copy, um, but it's perfectly legible and readable. So, and for this one comment, I'd like to stitch the house. And then this was a giveaway previously, earlier this year, and the young lady that won it never got in touch with me. This is Harvest Time from Chessie and Me. And we're coming up time to get fall stuff started. So if you'd like to stitch this one, let me know. And on this one, tell me that you would like to stitch the barn, B-A-R-N. And then, like I said, I rolled over 3,500 subscribers. So for that milestone, I'm going to give away one of the Pink and Navy Project bags. This Plum Street Samplers in Friendship pattern, because I figure in Friendship is a great one to give away. And then this is another kit that was donated by Rovaris. And it looks like a little Berman kitty, except Bermans have white feet, so this is probably a rag doll. But it's a pointed kitty, so close enough. And he's very cute, and it is a complete kit. It's got the, I believe, the fabric and the, and the floss in it. I have not opened it up to check. I will also include probably some silk floss and a fat quarter of linen in here. Um, I just didn't pull them out of my stash to show them today. But if you want to be entered for that one, use the word patchwork. P-A-T-C-H-W-O-R-K. Just, and you, that's all you have to say is patchwork, because that'll be the keyword that I search for on this one. I hope y'all enjoyed. It's 41 minutes, so it's a little bit longer than what I usually do, but it seems like I'm getting back less often, so they're going to be a little bit longer. Um, but I love sharing with you about my cross stitch, and I hope that you enjoy coming to visit too. And I look forward to seeing you all again sooner rather than later. We'll see how that works out. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all ha happy, and I wish you all the best. God bless y'all. Take care. Happy 4th of July. Bye-bye.